hi uh, this is the second lecture in the module on structural strengthening and stabilization in this we will focus on uh, beams and slabs and we will look at uh, both the uh, you know we look at method methods to uh, enhance both the flexural and shear performance so for first we let's look at uh, how uh, to enhance the flexural performance or flexural strengthening methods. Uh, I am showing here five general uh, methodologies. Uh, one, first one is uh, section enlargement that is basically enhancing the cross section of the concrete and uh, with and without uh, sometimes depending on the case we will go with uh, you know uh, added more reinforcement. Uh, not always, but sometimes with and sometimes without additional reinforcement. Second is externally bonded plates and laminates and then we will talk about external post tensioning and then also supplementary support systems and finally, we will talk about span shortening. So, these are the five uh, you know general methods for flexural uh, strengthening and we will look at one by one now. First, let us look at section enlargement. I am showing here six different types of or you know ways by which uh, we can enlarge the section and uh, enhance the flexural resistance. First one a beam overlay where you can see. So, in all these drawings the dark grey region indicates the existing concrete system and the uh, lighter grey towards the outer or peripheral region uh, with the concrete a typical concrete hatch uh, that indicates the repair material or the new concrete. Okay. The area inside on the left uh, you know you can see this area is actually uh, you know not shown as a dark region it is just to show that that is the area inside the uh, stirrup there is no other significance for that. Now, when you talk about beam overlay uh, as I mentioned earlier this is the uh, new concrete which is added and you can also see that there is new primary reinforcement and also new shear uh, reinforcement. So, all these are at the dash line kind of indicates the uh, shear reinforcement. And sometimes the re in the first case the shear reinforcement is not drilled into the uh, existing concrete, but if you look in the second case the shear reinforcement is drilled into the existing concrete. You drill a hole into the concrete existing concrete and then pass the shear reinforcement through that. And this process I mean it sometimes it it is easy uh, you know if your amount of work is less, but if you are talking about large number of repairs this uh, the process of drilling holes itself might uh, end up in uh, you know as a very very uh, big uh, job. So, you have to really think whether that is always necessary or is there any other way by which you can still uh, enhance the integrity of the uh, new concrete and the existing substrate and proper load transfer. Now, a third one is slab beam uh, overlay where you have both uh, new concrete both on the top of the slab and also the top of the slab here and also around the beam elements. So, slab and beam overlay and also you have through stirrups okay, which is indicated here you can see that this stirrup is actually going through the flange of the existing uh, concrete system. So, so that the entire the top to bottom all the elements are actually uh, you know can actually function as one integral uh, unit. A fourth case is overlay on top of slab where you can see here this one okay, uh, which can actually enhance the uh, you know the compression resistance and thereby enhancing the uh, capacity of the uh, flexural capacity of the member. And in this case there are two things which I would like to mention one is with uh, the additional reinforcement and also it is possible to do this without the additional reinforcement depending on the type of concrete and the material which we use I will cover that on a later slide. 
then case uh, number 5 is a soft fit slab overlay which is done where uh, and you know, done at the bottom surface of the flange an additional reinforced concrete provided at the bottom surface of the flange and also there are uh, strategies by which you can go with beam overlay and tendons okay beam overlay and tendons in here the green circles indicate the new tendons which are added but at the same time they are not external tendons they added tendons but their tendons are actually inside the new concrete or embedded inside the uh, uh, beam overlay concrete okay so now we will go through not all six of these i will show some examples of each one of these and then we'll discuss uh, how they are okay so beam overlay uh, undercutting is very important as you see on the picture at the both the pictures at the bottom undercutting is very very important to uh, do and um, if if we are exposing the existing reinforcement it may not be the case all the time but uh, you know undercutting is very important and at the same time when you put the new reinforcement that reinforcement should be anchored or you know it as you see here it should be going right up to the uh, you know it is in this case it is going right up to the top flange i mean in the picture it's not very clear whether it is going into the it could be also if it is going into the top flange it is perfect now the bar should be clean and also uh, you know sometimes depending on the exposure condition which you have you can actually apply anti corrosion treatment but make sure that those chemicals are not you know uh, they are not uh, you know spread or you know pasted or you know painted uh, on to the concrete surface because then that will function like a very weak layer which will lead to delamination of the new concrete uh, from the existing concrete so additional rebars in the picture on uh, photograph on the right side you can see additional rebars which is provided and like these bars here so I, what I did is I am in future slides also I am going to show you a lot of photographs from uh, the you know collected from the internet and other sources and which will kind of help you to you know really visualize things uh, in addition to the sketches which we have sketches looks very good you know very neat and clean but at the same time it is important to really know how reality is so that is why I am putting all these photographs so that you will uh, you know remember things much more clearer and better okay uh, so next uh, uh, thing is beam overlay with tendons okay this was the sixth picture in the uh, slide two slides earlier when i showed or different types of section enlargement this was the uh, bottom right and then you can see here those green uh, you know similar to those the green uh, circles indicate the tendons and this is a section over here if I show not necessarily the uh, section at the mid span if it is at the mid span all those green uh, you know green uh, you know tendons will come kind of here okay there will be one here and there will be a couple of them there. So, you can see four, uh, so two sections. So, the section uh, yeah, this this is this section here, okay. So, that you can see one, two, three, four, and five tendons, okay. So, these tendons um, typically uh, you know are provided inside the uh, new concrete or inside the beam overlay. And here you can see the additional stirrups which are actually drilled into the uh, flange so that you can have very good uh, integrity uh, and then uh, very good load transfer and then the entire section uh, functions as a single uh, unit. In the for, uh, sketch at the bottom right these stirrups are not really getting going into the flange but they are drilled into the uh, portion of the beam itself. So, all that is depending on the case to case basis which is easier to do looking at the site conditions more you know uh, practical issues. So, you can design that is why it is very important for the structural designer to actually go to the site and then 
uh, you know see the reality and then come up with a design which is more feasible and which is easily constructible. So, these are also very important because sometimes we see drawings which when you go to the site it makes a lot of difficulties to actually implement them or constructability is not really thought by the designer. So, structural engineers should really always think about how their designs are going to be implemented. So, good engineers think about all that. Okay. So, I request you all to make sure that you know how the what are the practical difficulties and all that must be thought through before suggesting a particular design to the site. Now, another way of section enlargement is overlay on top of slab. So, as you see on the on the sorry, as you see on the sketch here, this is the over additional material. So, you can see that on the photograph, it is a small bridge. Uh, you can see that uh, you know the there are additional reinforcement placed and then new concrete added to enhance the uh, capacity. Okay. So, some of these pictures are just you know used uh, to show you uh, you know you know real life scenarios and uh, there may be things which are not relevant for this particular applications uh, you know or the point which we are talking. But look at the points, the relevant points in all the images which I am, uh, all the photographs I am going to show you. So, here the photograph was selected because I can show you the additional reinforcement and at the same time the additional overlay concrete. This is an example, another example where uh, there is no reinforcement provided. In other words, these reinforcement is not provided in this particular example. Okay, but the concrete is ultra high performance concrete, okay, which has very fine fibers to prevent cracking and they are very thin layer, but very strong material, okay, very strong concrete. So, that you do not really need a very thick concrete layer, because when you provide more and more concrete, you are actually adding dead load to the structure, which is not always preferred. So, here you have a concrete which is very high strength which has very high strength and good resistance again cracking etcetera and at the same time because of those features we are able to design uh, an overlay which is very thin but at the same time it helps significantly uh, in enhancing the uh, flexural capacity. So, low material quantity that means low dead load no uh, less effects on the uh, dead load. I will show a little more detail on the same photograph. This is actually a Shion viaduct in uh, Switzerland. You can see that here in the uh, bottom right. Now, uh, the picture which I showed in the previous slide is this one. Okay. Now, you can see the details here. It is actually uh, very uh, you know done using a screed vibrator. You can see the, the uh, screed vibrator there which is the truss structure and then people are pulling and then the concrete is laid in a very fast manner and you get a nice surface finish also because of the uh, screed vibrator being used and the height is just uh, but you can see that wooden planks uh, you know which is kept here wooden uh, you know the uh, wooden pieces and then which is just about 1 inch height and that is the height of that uh, new newly added uh, you know concrete overlay. So, very thin element very high strength call, uh, concrete which helps in uh, increasing the uh, you know flexural resistance or flexural capacity of the uh, bridge. The details uh, like you know what why they went for this thing. Uh, they had uh, an experience of alkali aggregate reaction and then uh, yeah and then uh, the structure was about 50 years old and then a major upgrade was conducted or you know the structure was upgraded to ensure that the new you know uh, seismic uh, resistance standards or whatever the requirements are met and then more water resistant or moisture resistant and improve the overall structural properties. 
So, these are all the things which were considered and based on those consideration uh, ultra high performance concrete was used as overlay and more importantly no additional reinforcement uh, were used. So, we can enhance by just the thin adding a very thin layer at the top. One most important thing when you talk about these thin layers are how good the bond between like we said there is no reinforcement these reinforcements are not reinforcement are not there ok. But the very important thing is how good the bond between the I am drawing this red line along the uh, you know interface between the existing concrete and the overlay. So, that bond between existing concrete and the overlay is very very important to consider and it must be very good. Otherwise, this will not uh, function well because then uh, when there is a deflection possible then this uh, new layer will pop out or you know it will delaminate from the existing concrete. So, it is not only the strength of the new overlay material, but also how well it can bond to the existing substrate surface that is very very important. Otherwise, all these systems will not really work for long term. Now, uh, where which type of systems can be used? Enlargement below and side of the section is suitable when you talk about when we have sufficient space or headroom. Uh, otherwise, if you do not have sufficient space or headroom uh, below, then uh, you know that that is not a feasible option. Second case is when enlargement is done on the above the section that is when you do not really have sufficient space below the section or the section below uh, is not really accessible. For example, if you are talking about a bridge, it is much more easier to go over the bridge and do the repair work rather than going below the bridge you know make some scaffolding or stay under the water I mean above the water etcetera. So, the day based on the case to case basis we can decide which is the easiest way uh, to perform the repair uh, and come out of the work with minimal disturbance also in some cases. If you are talking about an urban uh, bridge maybe you do not want to go above the bridge and stop the traffic etcetera. But if it is a rural bridge with very limited traffic where the, you know rerouting or you know you can use one line at a time like the photograph shown earlier you know they did the work with uh, you know two lanes. So, one lane was open for traffic, but that was a rural case. If you are talking about an urban case maybe you do not want to uh, stop traffic on the top surface or above the section. So, in such case you may want to go for a repair practice below the uh, section, but then again you have to see whether there is traffic below uh, gets affected or not. So, all these have to be uh, thought through before making a choice and section enlargement will add more dead load to the structure and how that is going to affect the uh, performance or how that is going to affect the other elements uh, also need to be uh, thought through or the foundation uh, should the foundation also be strengthened. So, all this is important. Now, also very important thing is construction time. Typically, this section enlargement takes more time ok compared to other uh, ways of construction because most often you will need scaffolding to put the rebar cages that also takes time and then field trials and placing concrete that also takes time and uh, uh, then once the concrete is placed you have to remove the form work and then you have to cure. So, all these processes takes time as opposed to going and sticking something to the existing element. So, but sometimes uh, you know money plays a role sometimes technical things sometimes the difficulty to the others. So, whichever is the case we have to decide on what type of repair or strengthening technique need to be adopted. Now, externally bonded plates or laminates is the second uh, methodology which we are going to discuss and you see here adopted when enlargement of size of concrete does not suit. In other words, the if the section enlargement does not really suit or in other words you do not have space or you do not want to enlarge increase the size or you do not want to increase the dead load. In such cases we can go for 
uh, this type of uh, you know bonded reinforcement and here when I say reinforcement uh, there are two types in general steel plates are used sometimes FRP or CFRP laminates which could be flexible or rigid I mean depending on uh, the case to cases we will we can use but these are the materials which are available and usually these plates or laminates are provided on tension side to improve the positive moment capacity ok. So, whatever it is it is used it is applied whether where there is a tension force acting whether it is above the uh, you know uh, beam system or below wherever there are tension uh, forces coming uh, that is where we uh, install uh, these type of plates and laminates. And while installing it is very important to consider or make sure that there are no freely moving or you know there is no defects or there is no uh, you know uh, loose materials on the uh, surface of the concrete. There should be no coating residue, no free uh, friable surface, weak friable surface and also no defects. It is very very important otherwise it will not glue very well and if it does not glue very well to the concrete then there will not be any integrity between the plates and the uh, con existing concrete. So, they cannot function together they will eventually delaminate. Now, how to anchor or glue these uh, you know plates to the concrete sometimes only glue is used, but most often glue plus bolts or you know some kind of fasteners are used so that there is a mechanical anchoring also happening. Because if the glue fails the system should still be there and at the same time sometimes this uh, because of the bolt system it helps in uh, at the time of construction because the bolted system will hold the plate in place bolts will hold the plates in place and it can you can use a glue which can take more time to cure also. So, it is more of a application uh, you know or a practical uh, issue uh, why a, bond, a bolt and a glue is used are used. Now, bonded steel plate let us look at uh, steel plates first and then we will talk about examples of FRP laminates. So, steel plates or other shapes can be attached using other shape. Other shape is I have also seen angle lines if you are talking about uh, the uh, you know if you are putting this on an edge of a beam or something then you go with something like a angle shape. So, whatever is the shape of the structure and gluing is easier than drilling plus bolting, but sometimes considering the field uh, uh, conditions you do not want to hold this plate with hand or something for long period. So, it is sometimes better drill hole bolt it and then uh, you know inject the glue or epoxy to the space between the plate and the concrete. Quality of workmanship is very very important and critical how surface is prepared how the bond strength of the epoxy or the glue to the adhesive to the concrete and plate should be long and thin that is also something important to think they should be long and thin to avoid brittle plate debonding ok. So, the plate should not come off if it is too rigid or in you know, a too thick then there may be a possibility of debonding uh, you know uh, from the uh, concrete surface. Now, supplemental anchors to prevent debonding caused by the high local bond stresses uh, you know we can provide anchors that is those uh, balls which you are talking about and, add, and also they provide additional shear capacity. If you are talking about uh, plate uh, you know uh, if there is a uh, you know lateral movement or a movement along the interface if you provide these mechanical anchors or the uh, you know uh, studs uh, into the existing concrete that will also help in increasing the shear resistance or they will not fail uh, due to shear uh, shear force ok. So, uh, steel plate you can see an example here uh, I, this picture I showed it is not a plate, but I thought this is a good picture to tell you uh, you know it is not a steel plate it is a CFRP uh, laminate here, but I thought this is a good photograph to show you how this process should be. 
first thing is whenever we are talking about strengthening the first thing to do is release all the loads acting on that element if possible ok. So, here you can see on the sketch on the bottom uh, on the top right there is a dash line like this. This one is a dash line and this is also a dash line which is basically showing the deflected shape of the member. I am going to erase those two lines ok. So, you can see that black dash line that is a deflected shape. Now, first thing to do a repair or a strengthen this is to lift this use a jack or something and to lift this and then retain that original shape of the slab. Once the original shape is retained then we stick a plate or this uh, steel plate or a CFRP uh, plate to the bottom surface and glue it there. And if you do not have enough facility or if you do not want to if the let us say the the glue takes long time to cure. So, in such cases we can actually anchor it or bolt it and then inject the this is the glue we are talking about then inject that into the space in between. So, it will uh, you know it will take its own time to cure and then you can uh, do other things during that time ok. Now, in a building example for a building you can see here there are bolts provided. Uh, whatever I just showed in the previous slide. So, bolt and here also you can see a lot of rivets uh, looks like a rivet uh, and which is uh, you know provided to hold the plate and then facilitate injecting uh, grout into this place. I mean first you will anyway provide some uh, grout I mean some uh, glue there or adhesive, but if required we can also go the other way by you know injecting into the space between the plate and the uh, concrete surface. One more example uh, of this injection is the same uh, what I just discussed you can see here also this is a very old example okay, you can see here these are all the bolts which are holding the steel plate and then uh, this person is actually uh, filling the gap between the between the concrete and the steel plate and then allowing that material to take its own time to cure. Once it is cured then you can remove the support system. The, this is the support system you can see here. So, once it is cured and then it can take that uh, glue can take the uh, load or uh, the adhesive starts functioning then you can remove the support temporary support systems. Now, let us talk about fiber reinforced polymer composite it consists of high performance fibers very strong fibers embedded in polymer matrices ok. Very strong and very stiff fibers. So, you can see the stress strain graph which indicates high strength and stiffness which is embedded in a resin which may not have very high stiffness. So, the composite have a behavior which is in between. So, this FRP composite behavior is what is important to consider and these comes as a flexible roll material which you can roll over and at the same time thick uh, you know stiff plates are also or rigid plates are also available. So, comes in three major fibers which are used are carbon fiber, glass fiber and aramid fibers. May key properties based on uh, or which makes us use these materials is they are light in weight. So, it is not really adding any dead load to the structure high strength ok and then they do not usually corrode it is or in other words metallic it is not a metal it is non metallic material. So, they do not have the typical metallic corrosion and then non magnetic. So, you do not need to worry about electrical short circuit etcetera only one problem is they are brittle in nature. So, the designer should think about the uh, failure mode of the structural system you know or provide redundant system. So, that the structure does not uh, fail in a very brittle manner. So, multiple laminates may be provided. So, that they do not uh, the structure does not uh, fail in a brittle manner even though individual uh, laminates might fail the structure will still. Uh, you know fail in a more of a ductile uh, mode. Now, preparation of concrete surface is a key 
process otherwise they will not glue very well I already told about it. Very positive thing is they are very easy to handle as compared to uh, other uh, procedures and it can be done in very fast way. Even I have heard projects where it pro the entire work is done you know in a couple of days that is all you know it is very very fast. And if you uh, you know do the preparatory work earlier then just installation is very very fast. This is an example showing a two way slab where you have these uh, you know plates going and this these are CFRP or carbon fiber reinforced plates. Uh, plates uh, in a building structure you can see they are you know going in both directions for two way slab. I am just showing all these examples just to keep uh, you know make you more you know realizing the what the field structures how they look and all that rather than just uh, drawings. Now bridges with minimal headroom so you can see this is a culvert actually you can see a sm very small uh, you know headroom available here and uh, it was very easy to install something like this rather than uh, going for an uh, you know uh, increased thickness or in you know, a more concrete at the bot with a bottom with additional reinforcement etc. So, beam uh, you know the overlay at the bottom may will be very difficult to practice also and getting a quality product at the end is uh, more challenging. And one thing is this is passive strengthening with CFRP plates and you can see here they are not uh, pre-stressed or anything it is just glued and it is not even going till the end because it is mainly to resist the flexural uh, you know properties. So, you can see here it, 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 it goes up to here and this glued to the uh, concrete uh, surface. Now, other uh, a typical application of this kind of plates is pre-stressed which is an active system. Again you can see this girder here which is pre-stressed you can see the uh, the marking of you know how the pro the concrete surface was cleaned you can see that in you know, a bushing wheels marking on that. So, cleaning is very very important otherwise they will not work uh, very well they are cleaned and then uh, glue or whatever the adhesive is applied and then the carbon fiber reinforced uh, polymer is uh, placed and then it is pre-stressed. So, first you create an anchoring region uh, you know with the, the metal uh, system you can see there uh, as, uh, and then attach this CFRP laminate to that and then from the other end you pull it or you pre-stress the uh, whole uh, laminate which will what it means is you can see the jack here which is basically pulling the uh, you know or pre-stressing the uh, laminate. This will uh, uh, result in an active strengthening in other words as soon as the uh, work is over immediately the uh, CFRP laminate start taking the uh, stress or start take uh, sharing the uh, stress. Now, uh, I am going to show a case study where uh, you know this uh, FRP laminates were used. This was actually a building which uh, was attacked by I mean which had a, a fire incident and basically like a lot of uh, furniture and cushion materials were uh, and the partition walls, panels etc. were actually functioning like the uh, fuel for the uh, fire and it lasted for a couple of hours and then the hall with uh, RC concrete frame and roof slab and brick masonry walls uh, they were all attacked uh, by the fire and then beams and columns were strengthened uh, to compensate for damage and for taking additional floor to be built on top. So, this incident was used for enhancing the capacity so that we can build one more floor above. So, you can see in the picture first thing which was done was removal of the plaster and the concrete which uh, got uh, damaged. So, you can see here all the plaster and concrete everything is removed not much damage was observed on the uh, brickwork anyways, uh, but concrete really had a lot of problems. So, this here also all the plastering material and the damaged concrete was removed and then 
new plastering material was applied or replastered and then cleaned you know the surface uh, you know of the uh, plastered surface was uh, cleaned so that uh, the uh, chemicals or the primer can then uh, can be uh, glued well. So, after the surface preparation you can see a person cleaning it here uh, and then into the cleaned surface this uh, primer was applied and then the laminate the stiff plate was applied at the bottom you can see there the stiff plate was uh, glued to the bottom where the tensor, tension forces are acting uh, bottommost fiber and then after that for better confinement this left you know uh, the flexible sheets were also glued to the uh, you know surface <laughs> excuse me so the flexible uh, fcfrp sheets were also uh, you know glued to the surface you can see here this is the primer and, uh, uh, and then you can this blue color it's again the glue and this this is the uh, laminate now install uh, after that the uh, for uh, preventing the delamination of the uh, uh, sheets from the concrete surface and they were anchored to the uh, you know to the substrate concrete and how it was done was uh, as uh, I am going to draw that here. So, as you as I draw here you know the first uh, the fibers were inserted into a hole which is drilled into the concrete with sufficient glue and once it was held in place and then the remaining fiber which is protruding out what kept like a star shape or you know fly, you know spread like this you can see here also you can see these two look very closely and here also you can see how the anchor was uh, anchoring was done. So, I am going to delete these markings so that you can uh, see what I was just telling. Okay. So, this kind of so uh, it just opens up and then again that was glued. So, you have a really a non metallic nail uh, you know over there or an anchor a very good anchor and then after that uh, uh, before the, uh, the chemical uh, was dried or uh, to get a rough surface finish. So, that uh, you can have additional paintings and other coatings etcetera uh, to get you need a rough surface. For that purpose sand was sprayed uh, on the uh, epoxy surface. So, you can see here to get a rough uh, surface finish. So, sand was sprayed so that the ad other additional paintings etcetera can stick well uh, to the or bond well to this surface. So, that was the work uh, recent work uh, on uh, CFRP or strengthening using CFRP. Now, next way by which flexural strengthening is done is external post tensioning. I am going to show some examples on this too. You can see here an anchorage. Uh, a tendon is uh, uh, placed like this these are the deviator blocks and this black line indicates the additional tendon. Photograph at the bottom very clearly shows the tendon here and it goes like this and goes up on the other end of the bridge and this is the deviator uh, point there. Now, the same picture I am reproducing here. Uh, so, that you can compare one thing here on the top picture you can see photograph you see one tendon at the bottom you can see two tendons mainly to take care of the change in the uh, bending moment as it need reaches the uh, near support. So, where you do not want too much bending moment you change the direction in which the tendon goes so that uh, you can have an adjustment on the uh, bending moment uh, you can have uh, uh, only uh, whatever the priestess is required provide only that at that cross section or post tensioning is required. So, this corresponding to that I, I am showing here two tendons and in this case there is only one tendon, but these are all case to case basis how you want to do it. Now, this is a case where there are four external tendons provided you can see four tendons here 
mark indicated by these circles and similar uh, tendons are on the other side of the girder also. So, these, these circles. Okay. So, this just one more uh, example. Uh, one thing to note here is you know when these type of structures uh, you have to also think about how you will uh, you know apply the tension. So, the anchorage zone do you have enough space for up in uh, placing the jack if you do not have space how do we actually uh, do the stressing operation whether we do the stressing operation from the end or we can do some uh, use some couplers and stress uh, you know at the you know not at the ends but somewhere else along the like for example if you do not have a space for jacking uh, then we can also design a proper coupler system and have it you know here somewhere along the tendon and then tighten there like a turnbuckle uh, or something similar to that. Uh, those things are discussed later in uh, two lectures down the line on repair of pre-stressed concrete, but similar things uh, you know can be uh, done uh, in this repair also. So, space availability of space for placing the jack is also important to think about. This is another example again just showing I am just trying to show you more and more photographs, so that we can think in a very different different ways on how these systems can be actually implemented not just knowing the theory using a nicely looking sketch. So, this you can see you know many structures have been repaired or strengthened by using all these technologies. This is another one where you can see a straight tendon is provided there is no deviator block or anything a straight tendon, but the tendon this goes up to that point only it is not really reaching the end of the uh, you know the girder and a straight tendon is provided. So, it all depends here yeah, this is the uh, you know the way I you know in case uh, you have a very long tendon how to connect them. Okay. So, you can see a very nice system there where you can actually increase the stress or decrease the stress as you want. Because in when you talk about multiple tendons like this as you see in this bridge, the load which you apply on one might actually have an impact on the other tendon. So, you may have to come back and check that each tendon is actually uh, you know taking sufficient stress or in other words uh, when you apply uh, a stress pre stress or post tension one of the tendon the already existing tendon might lose some of the uh, stress. So, we have to think about all that that is why these kind of flexible systems are uh, essential. This is another example uh, showing two tendons uh, and post extensional external post tensioning is also done on bends, pier caps etcetera. Not only the uh, you know the girders, but also the elements which are supporting the girders. So, here is one bent cap a bent or pier cap you can see here uh, which uh, was showing some cracks like this in this direction vertical cracks uh, as it is shown here okay, these kind of cracks. So, when we see those kind of cracks it is very clear that there is a reduction in the pre stress or horizontal pre stressing is not adequate and that is why those cracks are those vertical cracks are forming. So, how to prevent this is first we have to seal or close the crack okay, and then apply a horizontal pre stress in, uh, in, the, in this direction. So, uh, you have to compress uh, the element and first you have to fill the cracks with epoxy and then compress the element. Uh, so, that it really uh, you know uh, the problem uh, does not uh, happen again and so flexural cracks are pressure epoxy grouted prior to stress pre stressing. It is not that you first do the pre stressing and then fill the crack no it is the other way first you fill the cracks with in, uh, injecting epoxy into it and so that there is proper load transfer possible or uniform load transfer possible and then you apply the uh, pre stressing. So, the cracks have to be closed so that load from one side of the crack is actually going to the or transfer to the other side of the crack that is very very important uh, process.
this is another example where similar uh, strengthening is happening you can see all this in this case uh, these are actually if you look very closely they are not strands they are actually uh, you know uh, high strength uh, pre stressing rebars okay it's not uh, strands okay but usually you will see both you know strands and rebars are used in this but if it is strands they will be uh, you know typically uh, mono strands which are you know coated with grease uh, or wax and then covered uh, you know placed inside a plastic sheathing so uh, protection mechanisms of these repair systems are also equally important or probably more important so that uh, the system uh, you know lasts for as long as possible or as long as we desire in this photograph there is a column uh, you know section expansion is also i mean uh, enlargement is also being done but i am not going to discuss that uh, right now that is a separate topic so what are the key features which we have to think about when uh, we talk about external post tensioning okay if they are very effective to increase the flexural and shear capacity of both reinforced and pre stressed concrete members minimal weight is added because essentially they are high strength materials uh, and then effective and economical for long span beams to correct correct excessive deflections uh, when the longer the span uh, then these becomes more economical and more effective and standard pre stressing str uh, strands or uh, rods uh, can be used entangers can be made of steel fixtures bolted to the structural member that are cast in situ like uh, it was shown in the previous two photographs also there were thick steel plates at the end of the uh, you know the uh, bend caps uh, bends now all existing cracks need to be epoxy injected first and if there is any spalling or any 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 of those surface repairs also need to be finished or completed before we Pro, uh, do the pre stressing um, of the element. Now, next is a, a supplementary support system where we are talking about uh, you know uh, structures which might have significant deflection or anything deflection and which need to be strengthened. Uh, one way is if, if there are one example is. Uh, where uh, like a look at here in the bottom left two images before and after you can see how the uh, you know if there is significant deflection and then that deflection can be uh, mini or you know uh, nullified or you know the whole system can be jacked up by using some supplementary support systems you can see here this is an example photograph where it is a jack where the height is actually adjusted. Now, uh, span shortening is another widely used practice to uh, enhance the flexural capacity. It is uh, not only capacity it also helps in enhancing the stiffness of the member by reducing uh, the uh, stress coming on the existing uh, members or the amount of stress coming on the uh, existing members. Uh, then various methods by providing column capitals as you see here, here you know that is mainly for a slab system where uh, you know even for beams it works, but uh, the picture shows uh, shown is for a slab system where by providing these capitals the uh, you know you the, the span for the remaining slab is actually slightly reduced and also you can provide diagonal bracing system or additional columns like this you can see here the photograph over here if it, it shows that you know how they look like and uh, main problem is when you provide this additional bracing or knee supports uh, you know the space constraint is a problem okay and cost effectiveness is also another thing which we have to look at I am showing a zoom out image of this so that you can see this is the bracing which we are talking about. You can see all these inclined elements they are all the uh, knee supports which we are talking and now when you talk about this these knee support they are actually resting on to the 
uh, columns which are visible and then that lateral load resistance how the columns take these load that is also something uh, you know need to be considered and if the they also need to be strengthened along with this work that also need to be done. This is an example photograph where not a concrete structure here it is just a bamboo structure which I show I saw that you know you can see uh, there is an additional support given here on the picture on the bottom right you see a deflected bamboo beam uh, it is essentially a beam and that is supported by providing additional uh, knee bracing and also sometimes you know this vertical column. So, just thought of showing you this nice image which I took it in one of the restaurants in Gujarat. So, you know it is not only concrete structures which have problem even other structures also have problem and there are these type of techniques which are not necessarily adaptable or applicable only to concrete it can be applied everywhere. This is a roof slab uh, heavily corroded reinforced concrete system and these bars only you know, I, I actually visited this site and it is almost nothing it is just uh, not really taking any load. I felt that even the it is standing because of the uh, you know probably the uh, arch action or something of the concrete itself you know the whole concrete is probably under compression and this uh, temporary supports are there. So, in such cases how we can uh, you know without really removing everything uh, we can go for an uh, overlay, but at the same time overlay just to cover up, but at the same time if we can reduce the span that is a uh, you know a feasible way of doing it. You can just uh, most of the houses you know you do not want very large uh, you know if you want to renovate uh, these kind of uh, structures you want to also come up with a feasible solution which does not take much time and does not create much difficulty to the inhabitants. So, attaching just simple uh, you know cross bars like this uh, you know to that floor uh, that will actually uh, you know finish the job work uh, job faster you can attach to the uh, concrete beams available uh, you know I am going to go back the concrete beam. So, this if, if you take this beam here you can actually attach the, uh, the additional uh, supports like this onto the beam. So, essentially what you are doing is you are shortening the span for that slab ok. So, that might work uh, you know and then you can provide some minimum reinforcement required and so that it can be really safe and, uh, and also if uh, such steel elements are provided and depending on the environment if it is an indoor environment I think it is ok. But if it is an exterior environment where you have moisture issues then you can also probably provide uh, you know concrete around the steel and then uh, or encase the steel member inside the inside the concrete which will help in uh, protecting the entire structure. Now, shear strengthening is another topic like we until now we discussed about flexural strengthening. Now, for a few slides on shear strengthening methods. Typically, most methods which are you know adopted for flexural strengthening can also be modified and used for uh, shear strengthening. All these methods which we we already discussed uh, first is internal post tensioning and then external post tensioning and then internal mild reinforcement just as a passive reinforcement mild steel uh, as a passive reinforcement and then bonded steel members you can see here uh, and then uh, enlarged member cross section or even provide uh, straps. So, all these are the different ways by which uh, flexural strength can be enhanced. So, I am going to show you couple of examples on some of these and then uh, close the lecture. So, strengthening the parapet bridge uh, using internally placed this is a, a case study where you can see here a long drill and that is used to drill a very long hole through the uh, deep girder which is uh, you know visible and which is in very bad shape. So, they drilled this hole uh, without really damage you can see the hole here on the second photograph without really damaging the 
reinforcement. So, they found a space between the reinforcement and then drilled through that and then placed the additional uh, you know cables through that and then post tension them or you know in this example it was a cable duct. Uh, but you can use either a strand system or a you know a, a cable system or a high strength uh, rebar or high strength rods. So, anything can be used depending on the amount of stressing required or the load required etcetera. This is external post tensioning because drilling that hole if it is a deep beam it is a lot of work and sometimes uh, it is not very easy and practical. So, in such cases we can go for external post tensioning where drilling is required only for this much length you know very short uh, amount of work and then you connect either a rod or a strand or a cable system. So, that uh, you know uh, the shear resistance can be enhanced. One thing to tell again if you do this the crack should be filled first uh, with an epoxy injection or something before doing the post tensioning uh, of the element. And why, why we fill the crack first is so that uh, the load uh, at the time of application of post tensioning the load can be easily transferred and in a uniform manner all along the uh, crack that is the reason. Now, CFRP straps are also widely used for external post tensioning uh, you know uh, for uh, enhancing the shear strength you can see the uh, sketch here all these brown color vertical thick lines they all indicating the uh, straps and you can see the shear cracks inclined shear cracks over there. One important thing to notice here is when you talk about uh, uh, straps these fibers should not get torn uh, or uh, you know the tear resistance of that should be uh, considered sometimes it may not be very good. So, the best thing is and they are very good in uh, tension. Okay but uh, they might get uh, torn. So, we have to provide a smooth uh, surface or smooth corner. So, that at the corner they also uh, can slide over and then take that uh, stress uh, you know uh, while uh, pre stressing uh, and at the same time they do not get damaged. So, half round bar stock is important something which is uh, curvy in nature can be provided right? or you can also chamfer the beam as you can see in this photograph here the beam is chamfered at the corner not a sharp 90 degree turn. I am going to show you a close up I mean another photograph you can see here this beam is chamfered and this uh, st strap is nicely curved and then so it can easily take that uh, load and uh, you know give very good uh, shear uh, enhancement. This is another example again you can see the shear uh, you know region or the near support region is um, only the near support region. So, this, this girder does not have any problem with the flexural resistance. It is a problem is mainly for the shear resistance because shear cracks were probably uh, observed uh, in uh, these elements like this and they wanted to uh, you know uh, uh, fix that issue. So, they provided this uh, you know FRP uh, laminates and that is only provided where the failure was observed not the entire bridge. So, it is a good way of you know optimized use of uh, you know, repair materials. Now, also internally placed passive reinforcement uh, is why also used just a reinforcement is this is not an active system it is just a passive system which is uh, you know in, in fact, I should have made this also blue in color. So, that you can match. So, this this rod vertical rod is also uh, assume it to be blue. So, all the blue rod they are actually passive reinforcement. So, placed in a, a small hole will be drilled and then hole and then grouted. So, they will come into action when there is a requirement. So, that is why we are calling it as a passive reinforcement unlike a post tension or a pre stress system. In a post tension system the moment you provide the uh, you know anchoring or the uh, pre stress then from that time onwards that is actually taking part in load sharing. Now, another uh, mechanism which some of the long span structures experience is 
uh, this uh, you know cracking uh, or the you know, hinge formation because of the temperature variation and uh, we do not know where this hinge might form exactly, but some you know region wise we can tell, but exact location may not be possible to predict. So, when you have uh, you know heavy you know very uh, uh, significant variations in temperature at different points uh, you know in this particular case the top portion is getting heated and is expanding where the bottom portion is still under uh, you know cool or in, in low temperature under shade. So, because of the expansion this kind of hinges uh, might form uh, where there is a bending action also coming. Now, the repair system which we adopt should allow the movement of these hinges. They, it, if it does not allow then it will actually what will happen is it will just transfer that stress to some other location and then uh, it will uh, you know form hinges elsewhere. So, it is better to allow these hinges to form and then uh, design your repair material system in, in a way uh, so that uh, you know the system will function. So, epoxy typically if you provide epoxy if that epoxy is very brittle or very rigid you know that that epoxy does not really is not really a flexible material. So, you have to really think about what type of material to be used. So, any repair of moving cracks if the cracks are forming closing forming closing or moving uh, by bonding the crack with epoxy will definitely fail if not in short term in long term it will fail. So, that need uh, it is not a good practice to adopt. In such cases what we should do is something like this where you provide a steel uh, support because our idea here is to transfer the shear uh, stress. So, uh, you know you can provide a vertical rod like this like this and then main idea is to provide a horizontal plate okay provide a horizontal plate the dark uh, gray uh, region and you can see here this is the horizontal plate and there is a thick red line there is a thick red horizontal line that is the teflon slide or in other words uh, it prevent it helps the uh, concrete element to slide or move horizontally horizontally i'm showing the arrow here to move horizontally so that the shear stress is transferred, but not the other stresses. Okay. So, uh, when the shear stress uh, shear forces are transferred not the shear stress shear forces are uh, transferred and not the uh, temp other other uh, you know stresses. Okay. So, it is essentially like an L shape uh, you know steel plate on which the uh, uh, element on the right side or the uh, concrete on the right side of this moving crack this is the moving crack concrete on the right side is resting on that and that whatever that vertical load is transferred through the plate and the uh, left side of the element is uh, taking that load okay now let's summarize uh, let's look at uh, you know what are these different external members which we talked about uh, as uh, strengthening systems so, we talked about bonded reinforcement post tensioning using either straps or uh, either st strands etcetera and also uh, post tensioning using FRP laminates. So, bonded reinforcement strands and laminates these are the three systems we are going to compare weight wise bonded reinforcement negligible weight and uh, post tensioning minimal additional weight and but laminates very lightweight. So, it does not really add anything to the dead load cost economical and uh, reasonable if it is bonded reinforcement strands economical, but also it depends on the span or the amount of work and laminates are costly and also uh, you know uh, they may not be good for significant increase in the uh, strength. Okay. Now, durability in the case of bonded reinforcement durability is enhanced uh, because the bonded reinforcement itself will uh, provide that additional protection it will cover the concrete surfaces and in some cases and then PT systems also in that case they must be protected they are, they are very vulnerable to corrosion sometimes. So, they must be protected and in case of laminates the anchorage is the most important part how well they are anchored 
to the system. If the anchorage fails, the entire durable, I mean, the system does not function. In case of strength, uh, you know, bonded reinforcement and strands enhances the strength. FRP laminates, it enhances the strength, but there is a possibility of brittle failure. So, multiple laminates or system should be designed in a way that the brittle failure, the nature, brittle failure of the structure is uh, not going to happen. Maybe one or straps can fail in brittle way, but the structure should not fail in a brittle way. So, in, to summarize, we talked about different uh, techniques adopted for flexural strengthening and for shear strengthening of uh, you know beams and slabs. I think these are the references which we uh, used. Uh, thank you.